belongs to that of Rush Limbaugh. Take a listen. Romney is not a conservative. He's not, folks. I mean, you can argue with me all day long on that, but he isn't. You know that the Republican establishment's trying to nail this down and end it. You know that that's happening. And I know that you don't want that to happen, and neither do I. Let's bring in our panel, Alicia Menendez, Senior Advisor for the New Democrat Network, and Robert Trainum, Washington Bureau Chief for the Comcast Network. Good morning to both of you. Robert, I want to start with you. That's uh, far from being a ringing endorsement there from Rush Limbaugh. And Mitt Romney is not going to change who he is overnight or, or even over the next year. So how worried should readers be that a Romney-led ticket won't really be playing a big role at the ballot box come 2012? You know, Thomas, this is almost like deja vu all over again. Recall back in 2000. 2007, 2008, Republicans were having this very same argument with themselves as related to whether or not Romney was conservative enough, and this was up against uh, John McCain in the primary. Look, Mitt Romney was the governor of Massachusetts. He was running for the United States Senate in 1994 against Ted Kennedy. Massachusetts is not a Republican state. Massachusetts is an overwhelmingly blue state. So thus in the process, and if you take a look at Scott Brown, any type of statewide candidate on the Republican side is probably going to be much more moderate than the mainstream Republicans um, in the South and so forth. So I'm not sure why we're having this conversation because it's a conversation we had four years ago. Alicia, it was just a short 40 days ago we were talking about front runner Rick Perry. Now it feels like he's scrambling to find the proper footing again with GOP voters. And then we had this moment from his wife yesterday, Anita, where she mentioned that the campaign and her husband had been, quote, brutalized. Uh, here is the response, though, this morning from Rick Perry. Take a listen. Family members always take these uh, campaigns a little more personally than the uh, candidates do. Uh, I've been shot at and, and, and missed and shot at and hit uh, for 20 years running for public office and being the chief executive officer of the state of Texas, um, we have our ups and downs. But the fact is, those are just distractions. Can you sum up for us uh, what all this means, Alicia, especially when it comes to the fact that Rick Perry is trying to reinvigorate his campaign right now? Well, you know, as the family member of an elected, I hear you, Anita, this is hard, but this is politics. Welcome to it. I, I think Perry is still demonstrating strength, if not in the polls and in his fundraising numbers. He raised 17 million this quarter. That's significant. And it definitely beats Romney's number of 14 million. So that means that his strongest supporters are not doing. What he needs to do now is get out of the weeds, stop talking about the HPV vaccine, stop talking about immigration, and start talking talking about his job creation plan and what he thinks the future is for America. If he can do that, I think he has an opportunity because Rick, Mitt Romney simply cannot seal the deal. All right, so our campaign embed, Allie Weinberg, caught up with Anita Perry and she rode through South Carolina with her yesterday. Take a listen, though, to the, with this, what she had to say. How do you feel when you hear what people are saying about your husband? Oh, you know, I take a deep breath and really hope that people will give him a, a fair listening opportunity to listen to what he has to say. I can't say that I'm a she-lion. Um, you know, I'm married to the man. I've known him since I was eight years old. He's a good man. He's principled. He makes tough decisions. He's a leader. So I just want everybody to give a, to give a fair look at him. Certainly a softer and a genuine tone there. So is Anita Perry now a sympathetic figure or, or a campaign problem? Robert, I'll ask you first. Well, I'm not sure she's a campaign problem. Look, this is Anita Perry version 1.0. This is her being the first time on the national scene. We saw this with, uh, with, with Michelle Obama, which she stumbled a little bit with some of the comments that she made in 2008. We saw this with Hillary Clinton. We saw this with Nancy Reagan. This is what happens when your spouse runs for president, and this is your first time on the national stage. I would suspect, in all due respect to the NBC in bed there, which is phenomenal. I would suspect, Thomas, that Anita Perry 2.0 probably won't be speaking to a reporter in the car uh, about her personal feelings. I think those days are over. Alicia, two for you. So what do you think about that interview and also the big number that's going to help Rick Perry, the 15 million that he has in the bank? Use it wisely, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that we see both with Romney and with Perry, the wives being trotted out because they do offer a measure of authenticity. After the last debate, you had Mitt Romney practically making out with his wife Anne on stage. She's 
she's been trotted out, I think because she's a whole lot more little than he is, and I think they're trying to use her wisely. As to your question about money, I think you're already seeing tremendous money being dumped into the ad wars, both in English and in Spanish, which I think is very interesting. I think for Romney, he's trying to shore up, make it clear that this is his race, and for Perry, this is all about taking Romney down. Alicia Menendez, Robert Trainum, great to have you both on. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. You too. Thanks. If you still have an iPhone 4, you're already out of date. Apple fans in seven countries lined up to be among the first to purchase.